no effective treatments for dementia. With Alzheimer's disease, the most common type of dementia, it presents a looming global health problem. And the population, it's aging and the prevalence of dementia is increasing. One in three adults in the USA will die from age-related dementia. And this is going to impact virtually everyone on the planet in some way. There is almost 50 million people worldwide with Alzheimer's and the associated costs of this problem will reach $2 trillion by 2030. This is a crisis of epic proportion. And having lost my own mum two months ago from dementia and having worked in aged care psychiatry for several years, it's a field that I'm personally devoted to making some small difference in. New approaches to reverse and to treat dementia are needed as the highest health priority of our national and global health agenda, more so than cancer and heart disease. Recent studies suggest that the brain signaling is interrupted in dementia and the ability of neurons to synchronize and to work efficiently is reduced. And this neuronal synchronicity, which is damaged in dementia, is called the gamma rhythm. Sensory information from our environment is the major contributing factor to how our brain responds and synchronizes as neurons and cells become increasingly damaged. We're going to see symptoms like memory loss, uh, forgetting names, forgetting where you've been, language and communication problems, and some behavioral problems with uh, people with the disease as well. Altered gamma rhythms in Alzheimer's disease are partly due to the toxic accumulation of a protein called amyloid beta, which results in reduced neural activity and cellular communication in the brain. Studies conducted by Dr. Lee Wei Tsai of MIT, Michigan Institute of Technology, have looked at how gamma rhythms affect the brain through a mouse study. Dr. Tsai learned that the gamma rhythm at 40 hertz was decreased in mice that had Alzheimer's, and particularly in a brain region that's crucial for memory and learning, the hippocampus. The diminished gamma rhythm occurs with the accumulation of these amyloid beta plaques, which is toxic, and it results in cell destruction. So Dr. Sai stimulated the neurons in the 40 hertz range of mice through light exposure, these flickering lights, and found a significant reduction of the toxic amyloid plaques by almost half, or around half. He found this 40 hertz optogenetic stimulation uh, activated genes and brain cells called microglia cells, which are part of the immune system. And what they do is they clean up uh, like little garbage sweepers. They come along and clean up the toxins and the microorganisms that cause disease. Now, whilst this study was done in mice, we know that these 40 hertz flickering light is also working in human studies too. There are studies that are looking at both light and sound in decreasing these plaques uh, that are found in Alzheimer's and other types of plaques in other dementias too. The 40 hertz exposure is also being investigated with sound. So sound and light are waves and we can use these waves in therapy and at particular frequencies we get particular results. So the 40 hertz frequency, it's not new, but it's incredibly exciting to use it in the context of disease management in dementia. It presents a non-invasive, affordable and simple treatment that whilst may not cure dementia, it can help manage and reduce the degenerative symptoms. So people like myself are using already using, and some people for many, many years have already been using these pain-free and harmless, simple strategies effectively in their clinics, not just with dementia, but with other illnesses or presentations that require sensory integration or improved sensory function. So I want to show you a simple exposure demonstration of sound and light that we use. But be warned, the strobe effect will carry a warning for people with epilepsy, with seizures of any kind, or vertigo. So if this might be you, please turn off the video now or forward the uh, presentation. The sound you will hear is a 40 hertz tone, but we would usually administer this bilaterally through a stereo headset, and the lights that we would use would be through a clinical lamp or through a goggle headpiece for best effect. But this demonstration is going to give you a bit of an idea of how we use this treatment and what a simple uh, treatment it is.